Like and one mom, my name is Tavis, and today we are going to paint a centurion. Now, I was out of ideas. I had no real clue what I was going to do. But, I also happened to come across a cleaning. One of these. A Red Bull Peach Edition. And I mean, if someone at Red Bull spent a lot of money figuring out a color, nice, pleasing color scheme, why not steal it? So yeah, we're gonna pick three main colors on this, the silver, the red, and the orange. Orange. We're gonna use that for a make. Why? Well, because. So, what we'll be using is a core of shining silver. And reaching into an old trick of mine, we're going to pick out a pair of contrast colors. In this case, ah, Blood Angels Red and Iaden, 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 Iden, Iden Yellow. And of course, top that off with some non shale oil gloss. What this hopefully will do is create a nice uh, hot rod racing car finish. Because this, this will be the Bullhorn, a Solaris make inspired by the legendary Gen Lo Wang. Because if you are a up and coming Make jock on Solaris and you want to emulate the best, you go for the best, the most legendary. But if you don't have enough money, you can't really get a good make, so you get a Centurion instead. Now the base Centurion, in its own right, is a good make, but it does not stand out a lot. It has a auto cannon, a missile rack, and a pair of lasers, one forward and one rear facing. Giving it a good all-round reach and compatibility, but still it is a medium make. Now, of course, the Gen Lo Wang was known for stripping out pretty much everything it could, so it could mount, I think it was an AC-20. This has an AC-10. So yeah, that's the idea anyway. That's the story. I consider it would have been some sort of story for this guy, but uh, it's a later problem. So, we're gonna start by wiping, whipping up a lot of silver on it. Because that's the base. Wipe down my my pad looks also a bit too wet. And yes, I'm using silver on a pad because I don't really care about it. The paper is what it is, and the sponge under is just a regular wet ex cleaning sponge. So I mean, that won't matter a lot. And yes, we are also putting paint directly on gray plastic. I know some people hate that. But we're going to give it a base coat of silver in this case, so putting anything under the silver would be quite honestly a waste of time. Because the hand idea is this kind of looks chromed by the time it's done. I mean, not actually chromed, because it doesn't have chrome paint, but chromed. Silvered. You know. You know the trick. You know the thing. Beyond that though, not much to say about the project itself. I mean, as I was completely out of ideas for what to paint. And if you were early, which I'm pretty sure, and I know no one was, um, because I am, the video got one view, I had another video where I tried to tackle a uh, 3D print of mine, but the print was not good and the video wasn't good and the video is now gone. Instead you get this, because I had this idea while I was working on that one. And stuck this, there's actually a good paint scheme. I mean, it's something you should know. But don't be afraid to like, take paint schemes from things around you. Especially other companies usually spend a lot of money coming up with pleasing color combinations and such. So if you don't feel all that creative on your own, look at what other companies do. Because I said, they spend a lot of money coming up with paint schemes that speak to the potential customers. Car manufacturers are great at finding good base colors. They're like awesome at it. And uh, sports teams are usually very good at finding combination of colors. Like for team colors, because they're supposed to stand out. Sometimes it goes a bit over the top, but again, if that is what you're looking for, I mean, that is not bad, is it? 
And this idea here is the Solaris mech. Uh, standing out a bit is okay, actually. In fact, standing out is what we're looking for. We want it to pop. Something that people will recognize when looking at it on a poster. This is not a war machine. I mean, it is a war machine, but it's not designed for war. It's designed for looking good. Now, I said some people would not like this paint scheme, and that is what it is, after all. Can't do much about that. No one likes everything. But I like it, I think, I hope. I don't know yet. It's not done yet, but I'm pretty sure I will be happy with this once it's done. But yeah, this is basically shining silver. I mean, it's, this isn't... I could just slap a black wash on this and it would look good too. Because I didn't do enough for Black Knight actually. I was thinking about taking Black Knight first, but I mean, I actually like more like this sort of idea of the pilot being a young guy or girl, depending on what you like. Non binary too. Don't want to exclude. Um, I'm using guy here more in the general term. But yeah, a young pilot, up and coming, maybe saved up a bit of money. It would get a ratty second hand mech. And yes, taking it to Arena, a dream of becoming like their hero. Or one of the legends. Now, if this needs to be dry as bone before we start at it, because if it's not, things are going to go very bad. So I'm going to give this another coat of paint, and then we're going to come back to. Uh, the whole thing with the contrast paints and we're going to explain why I'm doing that because you know we need contrast paints don't we so for you there will be just sorry um sorry about the flickering yeah for you it's going to be a few moments for me it's gonna be probably about 20 minutes so all right, now with the mech all dried and, well, very shiny, we're gonna mix up some contrast paints. This one is few times when I turn away from the, that looks grisly. Let's take it instead. This, this one a few times I actually turn away from Army Painter because for what intended purposes they don't have contrast paints. I don't know if that's because Kim Workshop sort of took the took the reins on that, or if it's just that no other company actually feels it's worth the hassle. I don't know. So this is a this is the tone we want: a reddish orange. And I just need a bit more of it. So it's about one part, one part Iladen, Iliaden, Iladen, Iden, Iden, yellow, to two parts Blood Angels red. Then we add some liquid to it to get a bit more flow because mine is actually starting to seize up a bit. And there we go. Now, what we're going to do now is apply this with a fine brush because unlike how you usually do it this is gonna have to take a bit of precision because we want things to be nice and chunky but still a bit flowy we're gonna take two layers of this so we're gonna go with this like you usually do with contrast paints I'm gonna actually add a we are going to add some non oil to this later to increase the shadow values. But until then, we just carefully apply this. We're going to put it on the lower legs and the lower arms because I think those are the places are going to look the best. You're gonna maintain the silver above that. And basically what we're doing is applying a 
sort of candy paint job. Which is perhaps not the first thing you would consider when thinking battle mech, but again, this is not a typical battle mech. This is this is basically a sports tool. Equivalent to a Formula One car or a NASCAR or something. They usually have really wild paint jobs. So we want a even coverage now. We don't want a lumpiness on the flat surfaces because we want things to be very, very smooth, very even. Because lumpiness in this at this time will not end well. And I mean, this is basically painting with inks, so you have to be a bit more careful when you do this if you want to replicate this. And that's that sort of thing we try to avoid. We want to avoid the the collecting collection of it. Try and spread it out a bit more even. Trying to spread out evenness that is important because not only does that make your life a lot easier later on, but it also looks better. Now on the feet it's okay if it's a bit gets a bit thicker because you're gonna we're gonna dirty those up anyway. But as, for all intents and purposes we are going to go with this slowly because there's no need to rush. Now I don't know. If it would be of interest to me to create a sort of Solaris setup with this, if anyone would like to see that. I don't know, would you? Uh, if you would, that would of course be fun, I could do that. And um, might even do a little bit of a arena I also have some other ideas but basically I have this idea of a, a story about a um, up-and-coming uh, up-and-coming um, team of Solaris fighters I mean it's a story it's, a, it's basically a sports story but with giant mechs I don't know if anyone would be interested in me fleshing that out. Because I could do that if if there's interest in it, I could do that. And that this would then be the sort of livery of that crew. Because I really like this. Now this was placed into sort of Iron Man aesthetics, for lack of a better word. I know, I know, Iron Man didn't invent Hot Rod Red and yellow and silver as combinations, but he used it very frequently. All right then, Let's see if we can get away with this. This is one of these times where we really have to be careful. So I want to try and get it on this, but not on the rest of the gun. So I want the tip of the gun to be clear of this Paint. I may have use painted silver after it should I paint over, but it doesn't hurt to be a bit more meticulous with the application. I usually rush a bit too much anyway, so it's good training to keep it nice and slow. Of course, for all intents and purposes, this is an easy way of doing it. Doesn't require much in the way of thinking elsewise because it does a lot of the work for you since it's contrast paint. You just need to figure out a good color combo and then go to town. The bad part is of course that contrast paints are very temperamental and do not always like I like to play nice, and since they are 
partly inks, sometimes they just get away from you. Like there, for example. I'm gonna touch that up later. Yeah, like that. That's looking pretty nice, actually, I think, to be honest, if I say so myself. But of course, I would think that because it is my design, but still, I would not say no to this design. Would I look upon it on the streets of my fair city? Eek! We got a little bit farther, but we can clean that up afterward once things are dry again. Once things are dry, we can clean that up. We're gonna have to clean it up anyway, because I just overshot again. But I mean, experimentation like this is part of the fun. Part of why I always like painting my own models rather than getting things that are pre-painted. Because as nice as they are, and they are often very nice, nothing really come close to giving it your own touch. Hmm. Where else do we want this? I'm gonna put this in the helmet actually. Well, helmet and helmet, but you know what I mean. It's a centurion after all. What would a centurion be without their helmet? Well, a helmetless centurion is what it would be. But again, you know what I mean. Now, I'm pretty sure someone else has thought of this paint scheme before. Wouldn't it surprise me in the slightest. It's way too nice of a paint scheme to not have been thought of before. We're gonna clean all that up later too. Yeah, the dimension I'm not the best with minute detail. So the question is then, what else should we do now? What else do we want the red? You've wanted more red on this. I don't know. Hmm. Let's try to avoid brushing our hair with a brush full of dye. I have to think about that for a little, little moment while the first layer dries completely. Hmm. I mean, this is also. Partially nod back to the Silver Centurion, which is the name for Iron Man's first armor, and his design was a red and silver. That's why I brought up him before, because his his first armor was this color scheme. In I think it was inverted. I think it was red, silver. No, it was red, silver, red, red, silver, red. So the mid part would be red too. We are going to stay away from that actually. Just because I don't want this to be just be a Iron Man ripoff. <laughs> Any more than it already is, that is. So yeah. Our claim to fame of course will be adding the orange into it. Which some would say harkens back to the gold paint, but it's not gonna be gold, it's gonna be orange. And we are gonna actually deviate from our regular uh, army painter fair here because for all intents and purposes army painter is great they're nice flow and then such but their paints don't always have the most uh, pigments 
sometimes the pigments sort of come out short on them and you end up with having to do a lot more coats than really is necessary that should have been necessary in order to get the same coverage as some other paints so we're gonna switch it up a bit and go with the old war horse of citadel paints which of course is games workshops brand as i said they have slightly better coverage yeah oh, yeah this is going well actually Yeah, this is turning out nice. I think you're gonna like this actually. It's turning out better than I thought it would. I mean, this is all from the silly idea of a Red Bull can. But it should never. You should never toss good ideas because you never know where you're gonna get your inspiration from sometimes it's a logical place sometimes it's not logical at all sometimes it's the most illogical places you can think of and that is the excitement of it all isn't it Never knowing where your inspiration is going to come from. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Let's. Such a darling. Such a beaut. Well, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back in a jiffy. So then, with the model mostly dry, we're going to go back in and add some nice orange areas. And I'm still not entirely sure how I'm going to do this, but I think I'm going to paint some panels orange to begin with. Because I like the contrast it gives. You also have some striping at some other places. Like on the legs, for example. Again, we're going to try and avoid overpainting all too much and instead try to figure out a nice solid design. Now this orange is going to take more than more than one layer to get this looking good. I just want to give this sense that the Centurion as its core just has these things bolted onto it rather than being purposefully built with different ornaments. I don't know. Because you see in the design here that this chest area does have a symmetric design and then it has weapon systems bolted onto that symmetric design. I kind of like that. I don't know why, but I just kind of do. It's a nice design. Now we are going to edge highlight this a bit later on. Just to make sure that we get a good pop out of it. Yeah. Like that. And I want a stripe on the leg. I hate painting stripes. I'm not necessarily good at it.
Oh, well, this is gonna be fun. Well, that mostly met up at least. Should we have some other stripes, perhaps? I don't know. Perhaps a sort of slightly hazard sign looking thing on this, on this shoulder pad here. Can you see that? Barely you see that, okay. I like that. <laughs> Let's see if we can just carefully get this done then. A bit more popping on that one too. that. I kind of like to have some more orange accents like here for example. I don't know why I want to add it there but I, I do want to add it there for some reason. We're just going to have to add it in here, don't we? some more touching up. So, 
Final step, non-shade gloss. Why gloss? Well, because it creates a nice, a nice finish to it. Again, I usually don't do gloss on the in the sphere mix because. because they're supposed to look a bit run down. But in my mind, if you have a, I mean, no one gonna roll up with a race car that is full of rust and grime, are they? I mean, and that's just folk racing, but that is a completely different thing. I'm pretty sure in the folk racing league of Solaris, I'm pretty sure the makes are rusty too, but this this is not supposed to be a low tier, but still a sort of fighting The idea is that it's still gonna look like it's a somewhat professional vehicle Not a tractor So, I mean, it still has to look the part. Because appearance, as we know, is everything, whether we like it or not. And when you're trying to... When you try to impress future investors, you can't roll up in dirt and grime. You have to put on a bit of a show. So, yeah. This is the idea here. It's not supposed to be look brand new, but it can be well taken care of. That's the idea. So, like this. So it's not going to have a shine to it. Not, not a lot, but a little bit of a shine to it. But still a touch, touch of grime. Yeah, I like this. So we're gonna let this dry and then we're going to give it some beauty shots. And there you have it. The Bullhorn Centurion. Future champion of Solaris. Inspired by Jen Lo Wang, and I hope you enjoyed this process. This is just an example of how you with some quick, easy techniques can get a good looking mech. Now from here on you can just keep adding on details, you could edge highlight, you could uh, gem the laser if you want to, and so forth and so on. But consider this mech supposed to be seen sitting on a tabletop, I would consider this actually to be a good, good place to round this off. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, if you would like to see more like this, um, subscribe, like. You can also check me out on Instagram as Tavas the Me, and this below the video. And um, until next time, stay safe, be kind, and play fair. Bye!